Hey, welcome back to the 11th section of the Webflow course. Today we're going to learn how to use data. Specifically, we're going to learn how to use a CMS, a content management system, so that all of this content right here is repeated over and over using a content that is elsewhere. And in this case is the CMS, it's created from here, and we have a bunch of fields and we can input this information from outside the actual development of the design. This is especially useful for blogs, for portfolios. You don't wanna to have to do all of that data manually. So you can put that right here and just add more content directly from this UI. So let's get started. We have our layout and then at the very bottom for the body, I'm gonna select body here and insert a new section. So for layout section, it's going to be called FAQ. This section is going to have a margin top of 100 and margin bottom of 100. The same for the padding, 100 top, 100 bottom. Let me scroll down a little bit. This is what I have so far and I'm going to set a background. So the background here, I'm going to choose the image, set background five. And this is the one. Set the width to auto. It's going to position from the top right. And I'm going to add a little bit of offset from the top. So for top is going to be minus 20%. So it's going to push down a little bit. You don't see it yet because we don't have any content to push the container. So let's add some content. I'm going to insert a new container. So this one. And for this container, I'm going to set the content to align center. So for typography, but you can also use this for the content, unless of course you're using flex, in which case you can center vertically and horizontally at the same time. But in this case, I wanna keep it simple and also I don't wanna stretch. So let me just use this as a display block. And inside, I'm going to create a title. For the title, I can just use one of the titles such as this one. And to keep things organized, I'm going to name this one title. Copy this and paste this right inside the container. I'm also going to rename this container to FAQ container. For the title, I'm going to paste this text, which is frequently asked questions. And now we're ready to add that CMS content. In order to add a CMS content, I'm going to add to my FAQ container and I'm gonna press A to find CMS right here it says collection list. So I'm gonna click that. When I do that, it's going to give me some placeholder and I need to connect it to a collection. Now I can create that content. So I'm gonna to have to click on collections panel or you can find it right here in CMS. So it's gonna tell you to create your first collection. So let's click that. And now we're gonna create our content. The collection name is going to be FAQ and it gives you some default collection fields and they are required. Um, for the name, we can rename it to question, press save field and slug, we cannot change it, but we're gonna add a new one for answer. Click on add field. You have a bunch of options, so you can store a bunch of data, including plain text, rich text, images, video, links, email, and so on. And in this case, I'm going to select rich text. Let's rename this to answer. And we're going to make this required and save field. Once that's done, we can basically create the collection. And at this point, anyone in your team can just come in and contribute content to the website. But let's go through that exercise. We're gonna click a new FAQ and it's going to ask for a question. I'm going to copy and paste some text 
and the slug don't worry about it it's going to create a page automatically for you so you can go and create a page specifically for that faq but in this case we don't really need that um, and then for the answer now this is a rich text which means that i can style any part of this field so if i want to create a link to open the email client i can just get my link first and then do link and paste that so mail to if you name it like this it's going to open the email client automatically with the recipient to this email and voila so now that i have my content i can just create it and let's create a new one with some other text and some other answer and create it this is what i have so far and i can just go back to my layout and here it's going to ask me if I have a source. So I can select from FAQ and automatically it's going to show me that this is one of the entries that I have. So I have two entries so far and I can just start populating into a UI. Let's create that UI. I'm gonna open my collection list, go to the collection list item and then press A to create a div block. I'm going to set the background to white with a rounded corner of 40 and a little bit of drop shadow using the angle of 180, distance 20, blur 40, and 15% opacity black let me add some padding and margin so what we're gonna do is margin top and bottom to 40 left and right is going to be 20 for the padding is going to be 40 on all sides so i can just click and shift scrub it to get a 40 but for padding top i'm gonna set it to 20. now we can enter some text so having this selected i'm gonna press a click on heading set it to h3 now you can already see that we have a new option called get text from faq because we have the source and we just need to get the text you can select the field and you can select one of the fields such as question the dates for created published update in this case it's just the question and voila it automatically fills the content for you as long as you connect it to the right ui at this point i can just style this so i'm going to select the heading and then set the font to 24 which is already that the color is going to be this code and the weight is going to be semi bold let's add a new text so i'm going to press a and this time it's going to be a rich text and this is really important if your content source is of type rich text you have to have a rich text element otherwise you're not going to be able to use that rich text field so i'm going to select rich text and get text from and faq answer boom that's done now i can set the size to 18 the height to be 30 and set the color to be this color code if you want to know how to customize the style of the links we're gonna to have to create a new link element and then we just need this to be able to customize the style from here you have it selected you go to the selector and you're gonna to have to select all links and once you have this selected you're gonna be able to style all the links at the same time so i can just 
change to the color of the typography to this code. And as you can see, it also applies to the link inside the rich text. So now I can just remove this and it's going to remember. For the text, I can decide to left align it if I want to. And if I want to make this box smaller, I can go and set the width of 700. But the problem with doing this is that it's not going to be adaptive for smaller screen because it stays to 700. So what I can do is do a, instead of width, I can set max width, which means that when I have a smaller device, it's going to take 100% width, simply. I'm just going to center this box, selecting collection item, and I can change this to flex and just center it like this. When you do that, the padding might work a little bit differently, so you might have to adjust a little bit. So for example, I'm gonna set the margin to 20 instead, and this should look a little bit more like what I had planned. So CMS is a really powerful feature for dynamic content that needs to be repeated over and over, and that can be entered by someone else in the team. So definitely give it a try. Now let's publish what we have so far and check the results. It's working perfectly. And now we have the content from the CMS. So I hope you enjoyed your session with me today, learning about CMS. In the next session, I wanna teach you how to use symbols so that we can reuse elements across multiple pages. So it's awesome for design systems, for elements such as the footer. And then when you change in one place, it's going to change across all the other pages as well. I definitely look forward to the next session. So see you then.